Hey guys, Bill Nichols here, back after my week-long road trip. On this road trip, I had originally planned on posting content every single day, and then I found once I got out and I was on hikes and I was shooting and I was flying drones and everything else, there wasn't enough time, and my bandwidth that was in Utah and Colorado and Arizona was horrific. I think I was getting 200 kilobits per second up. So the one video that you saw that I posted, that took, I wanna say about four and a half hours to upload, and it wasn't even that long of a video. So I'm back now, I'm home. I'm starting to edit some of the content that I produced as well as producing new content. So next week I'll be on a regular schedule. But one thing that I did on my trip this time was I shot a bunch of panoramic photos of skies because I'm gonna be putting out a sky replacement tutorial coming up. Um, as part of my site launch and for everybody that signs up to a newsletter which is just going to come from me it's going to be a monthly newsletter basically giving you an overview of what were the videos for the past month what were the most popular videos it's going to be some drone news some camera news it's going to come from me um, I'm not going to have I'm never going to give anybody's email address out or anything but for everybody that wants to sign up for that as part of my launch I'm going to give away a free sky replacement tutorial and along with that I'm going to give away a download of about 50 super high res skies and a lot of those are stitches where I took three images and made some very wide skies that you can use in your own photography for, com for composites. Say you shot a, um, say you were shooting a house for real estate and there's just a blue sky and you wanted something more dramatic, there'll be a sky in there that you can replace it with. Or maybe a landscape, you were on vacation, you shot somewhere, but you really saw the sky, you didn't get it and you wanted to replace that with another sky. I'm gonna offer a download and a tutorial on that. So with that, what I wanted to go through today was some tips on shooting panoramic photos, some things that you should think about. Then I'm gonna going to head into the studio and record how to make a panoramic image, a very simple one of just three horizontal images in Lightroom and in Photoshop for anybody that has Lightroom, for anybody that has Photoshop. There are other programs out there like PT GUI and some others. So first, some basic tips. Number one, if you've got a phone and it's got a panoramic mode, use it. The panoramic shots that come out of the iPhone and that come out of the Samsung, they're actually quite stunning. They work really well. They look great. Easiest way to get a panoramic shot. I'm really interested to see now what it's going to look like in iOS 10 with RAW support coming out. I haven't seen RAW from any of the others, but with RAW photos coming out of the iPhone, it's going to be really interesting to see because I know that we're capturing 50, 60 megapixel panoramic images with the iPhone. So if you just want a simple panorama of where you are, you've got a DSLR in your hand, you've got an iPhone in your hand, shoot one with your iPhone before you start shooting with your DSLR. You're gonna get a great one with your iPhone. It's very simple, just go to the panoramic mode. So for simplicity's sake, shoot with your iPhone. If you want a more uh, detailed, a higher resolution, uh, higher quality file, you can shoot with the DSLR. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So your most simple panorama that you can do is a horizontal panorama, one row of images. And typically what I do is I'm overlapping about a third of the image. A lot of people out there will say that 15 to 20% is just fine. I wanna make sure that if there's any correction that Photoshop or Lightroom has to do, that I have more than enough for it to sync up. If there's anything moving that doesn't quite line up, that's gonna throw it off. So I wanna have enough information. So I'll shoot one image and then my next image will be at least a third overlapped and a third overlapped. So I end up with, a, with an image that's about 160% wider than it would normally be, or maybe about 200% wider than it would be. So that's number one. Number two, you wanna have your camera level and try not to go above about 45 degrees or 45 degrees down if you're doing multiple rows. Because think of your lens, your lens is a curved piece of glass. So as I move up, stuff is gonna start getting distorted one way or the other. You know, I'm going down, the stuff at the top is gonna to look much larger than at the bottom. Conversely, if I'm, if I'm pointed up, the stuff at the bottom or the stuff that's near to the lens is going to look much larger than the stuff at the top. And it's gonna have a really hard time correcting that. And if I'm doing multiple rows, um, another thought is to not use a super wide angle lens. So I might, I might take more shots, but I've done huge panoramas of 80 plus shots with my 70 to 200 lens, where I've been zoomed in at about 135 millimeters, or even shot them with my 135 millimeter lens, where I'm getting you know 10 to 15 shots per row. I'm doing like eight rows, and since I'm since I'm using a, not a super wide angle, there's not a lot of distortion. I'm having to do a lot more overlap, but I'm getting an incredibly huge file. Where if I'm using a wide angle, you know when you've seen a wide angle, you know when you come in really close, you can get that distorted effect. So if I'm using a wide angle and I'm out really wide, then as I move, I'm gonna get this bigger distortion that's gonna have to be corrected. There's gonna be a lot more cropping. I don't wanna do that. 
So I shoot almost all of my images though on a tilt shift 24 millimeter lens. And what this allows me to do is I set, the can I set the camera level. Let's just go this way. I set the camera level so that's level um, horizontally. I don't really care about vertically if I'm just doing one row. And then um, I can just shift my camera, my lens left and right. And what that does is if I'm level, all of my verticals are vertical and um, everything's pretty much geometrically true. There's not much distortion with this lens. Then as I move the lens over, it's kind of like I'm moving the whole sensor over. I'm just shifting everything over left and right. And I'm able to get a very true image that I can just line up next to each other and get a really good panorama with. So my number one tip is use a tilt shift lens. Not everybody has one. You can try renting one, see if you like it. And I'll do a bigger lint tilt shift tutorial later. But if you don't have a tilt shift, then just think of keeping your camera level. So as you're shooting, you don't want to be tilting your camera um, out of the horizontal plane. If you have to tilt up and down, think of this first row. I'm going to shoot, let's say that I'm going to shoot a three row image with three images, um, with three columns of images. So I shoot that first one and I'm going to shoot the top row first. So I shoot here. I overlap by 30% shoot here, overlap by 30% shoot here. Now when I move down, I need to overlap that top row by 30% and overlap, overlap these images by 30% and come down. Now I've got nine images where everywhere that they intersect, they're overlapped by 30%, and then Lightroom and Photoshop, is gonna, they're going to have enough information there to put those images together, correct the distortion, you're gonna see some cropping, and it's going to do a relatively good job. There are other programs out there like PT GUI or others that you can use. I'm gonna focus on Photoshop and Lightroom, that's what most people have. So those are my main tips. Um, don't use a super wide angle lens. If you are, zoom in and take more images, but use something that's more of a telephoto um, instead of a wide angle, and you'll get a more geometrically true image. And then you could always use something like a 360 camera, but I'm really talking about using a DSLR here or a point and shoot. A lot of point and shoots have a panorama mode like your iPhone does, so you could use that as well. So let's go into the studio. I'm going to pull up a very simple one to stitch. It's going to be of a cloudscape that I took that was uh, in Utah. I'm going to show you in Lightroom what you do to do the stitch. I'm going to show you in Photoshop what you would do. So let's head up into the studio. I'll show you that now. In the studio, I've gone into Lightroom and I've created a quick collection here. In this collection, I've popped in six images of clouds that I took this past week. I'm going to do two quick stitches here. I'm going to show you horizontal and vertical. It's really the same process. What I have here is I have three images, and when I say that I overlap about 30%, you can see here on this one with this great rock formation that's in the middle and what I thought was a pretty awesome looking sky, I've got my center, I shifted right, then I shifted left. And you can actually see here where my camera wasn't quite, uh, my camera was not quite level. So if you look at, uh, if you look at the uh, road here, how it switches, it kind of distorts. This is gonna be interesting because what uh, Lightroom is going to do. So I believe that on this, let's look and see what we had. Um, if I have the lens on here. So I was using the tilt shift. I was not mounted on my tripod. So I was just hand holding this and moving and that's why you see that distortion there. What I'm going to do is the first thing that I do with all the images. And I don't really need to do this with the 24 millimeter, but we will. I go in here in Lightroom uh, to the develop panel. I come on the right hand side and I scroll down until I see lens correction. I just say enable profile correction. Set up default, I'll just say auto. Lens here, Canon, and it sees that it's a 24 millimeter, so you'll see a little bit of distortion correction here. So there's the image after, there it is before. So if you look in the middle, it kind of pushes that back a little bit, flattens out the edges, gets rid of that vignette. I'm going to take that same correction and just apply it to each of these images. I'll choose Canon, and there it is, and apply it to the next one. And apply it to the next one. So now I have these three images. They're corrected as far as Lightroom is concerned. Their perspective is a little bit off. So this is where you're gonna see the crop. So in Lightroom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down Shift, select my first image here, hold down Shift, select my last image, so all three are selected. I'm going to right click this and I'm going to say photo merge in panorama. And this pops up, there's going to be some options. So it's doing a preview. So what it's trying to do right now is auto calculating uh, what it needs to do. So right there, so you can see the, um, the panorama now. 
it's uh, merged over. And if I don't tell it to auto crop, there's what it would look like. So this is where I was talking about earlier. If you're hand holding these or you're using a tripod, not using a tilt shift, this is what you'll generally get is where you have a lot of pixels. So all of this represents the picture now as it's been moved and rotated, you know, to, and some geometric correction done for it to uh, fit in here. Then I'm just going to tell Lightroom to auto crop it and it crops it to the best that it can. So basically it's getting rid of all of the empty pixels, so the pixels that have gone to white and then it's giving you an image. So all that I need to do here is say merge. I'm going to come out with an image. So you can see up here in the left-hand side where it says creating panorama. And here is the image. So there's the final uh, panorama. So you see a little bit of barrel distortion down here in the road, how the road looks to curve a little bit. But overall, that's a great panorama. I've got this canyon on the right-hand side. I've got this rock in the middle of the skies. So there is the image. Now let's go to one that I did shoot on the tilt shift. So you'll see a little bit of a difference here. If you look right here along the horizon, as I moved, it's just gonna shift over, right? So there's a little hill right there. Um, but the horizon stays relatively level. The skies are just coming across. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to grab these three. I'm gonna right click, say photo merge to panorama. It's gonna be able to do this one quite a bit quicker because it's not going to have to do all this uh, perspective correction. So there it is right there. So if I don't choose auto crop, now you can see with the tilt shift, the difference, there's a little bit on the bottom and on the left-hand side and just a little bit on the top. It's because my camera wasn't perfectly level, but my slide or my, um, my shift was, right? So my shift just went left and right on a level plane with my lens. And this is the little bit of non-level that my camera was. I'm having to cut hardly anything out. So now we just say merge. And by the way, these three skies right here, I'll include these three vertical skies in a zip file that will be on Re We Transfer, and you can download them and do whatever you want with them. Just don't claim them as your own. If you use them in something, just please credit me back. That's it. Um, and do not sell them on their own. You're free to use these in a composition that you sell, but do not sell these as your own skies. So now you can see here, we've got a huge stitch of all three of these and really hardly any cropping that took place at all. A uh, little bit dark, so I can just come in here really quickly. If I wanted to be very just quick about it, hit auto tone, brighten that thing up. There we go, nice beautiful sky. And that is a stitch in Lightroom. So let's do the same thing. Let's, um, I'm gonna export these three files to the desktop. So those are exported. Let's open up Photoshop. There it is. Now to do this stitch in Photoshop, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Automate, and we're going to do a photo merge. It's going to tell me to go ahead and select. So I'm going to choose Auto. <clears throat> I've almost always chosen Auto. I don't have to do anything else. I'm going to browse for files. I'm going to go to the desktop. I see Stitch Tutorial 1, 2, and 3. Let's open those up. They pop into here. Uh, I'm going to tell it to do a vignette removal and geometric distortion correction. Now, what's new, this content aware fill transparent areas, that little bit that you saw in Lightroom where it cropped it out, it can do a content aware fill in there, and it's going to fill it in with basically an analysis of what the nearest pixels are, then fill those transparent areas so that it doesn't have to do that crop. We're just going to leave that off for now. It's a new feature, though. It's a great feature. Let's hit OK. It's going through, it's going to automatically align the layers and it's going to stitch them together. And there it is. Basically, same result as Lightroom and then you can do whatever you want to in Photoshop. So it's that quick. I can save it out. Let's go ahead and close Photoshop. I'm not going to save this. And there it is in Lightroom. There's the panoramic image. <clears throat> so like I said, I will take these three um, files that I just exported, Stitch Tutorial 1, 2, and 3, I'm going to put those into a zip file. I'm going to put them on WeTransfer and uh, let you download them and do whatever you want with them. Just don't sell them as your own uh, individually. Like I said, you can use them in a composition that maybe you're producing for whatever. It's a great sky to use. So feel free to. And uh, that is creating a photo merge in Lightroom and in Photoshop. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. I hope that you found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments, post below. Um, I will go ahead and I'll take three of these images. 
uh, three of the clouds. I'll put them into a file on WeTransfer so that you can download them and you can run through it yourself in case you don't have time to go out and try and shoot one. Just grab those, see what you can do with them. But I go ahead and try this in Photoshop, try it in Lightroom. If you have any questions or comments, ask me below. Starting next week, I will be back on a regular schedule. So stuff that I have coming up, giveaway announcement. So I'm almost at 3,000 subscribers. I suspect that after this weekend I will be. I'm gonna do the next giveaway. It's gonna be a great giveaway. So I'll have a giveaway announcement next week. I have another Lightroom tutorial. I will have um, some, some further uh, reviews of the Autel X-Star Premium. A video next week on the X-Star Premium. I will have uh, the X-Craft, the um, X-Craft one that I had a while back that I did the unboxing of. I had an initial problem with it. I got in touch with their support. I had problems with the manual. I had problems with the drone. Uh, their support was actually awesome. The CEO called me. They made improvements to the manual, improvements to the packaging based on some feedback that I gave them. They sent out a new drone. So I'm going to assemble it and take it on its first flight next week. And uh, that's what I have planned for next week. If you have uh, any questions or comments, link below, uh, subscribe, send the channel out to people. Uh, the next giveaway is gonna be great, and then I have got a really great giveaway after that. So thanks so much for watching. You guys have a great weekend. Look for a Sunday flight. You keep watching, I'll keep making videos. I really appreciate everybody taking the time to watch these videos. Talk to you soon.